Let's take a look at I2, the intermolecular forces for I2. This is diatomic iodine, also called molecular iodine, sometimes iodine gas, although this can be a solid. When we look at the intermolecular forces for iodine, our first question is, are there ions present? Do we have a positive or a negative written here after the formula? And we don't. And because of that, we can just get rid of all of this here. So that makes it a little bit simpler. The next question is, do we have polar molecules present? Well, with iodine, it's just two iodine atoms bonded together, covalently bonded together. They're the same atoms. When we talk about polarity, we're talking about a difference in electronegativity. So since these are the same, we don't have any polar molecules present. For that reason, we come over here and we go down. And for I2, we have London dispersion forces. Those are the attractive forces between iodine molecules. London dispersion forces, they're temporary dipoles, and we have them with these nonpolar molecules like I2. Because the iodine atoms are large as we go down group 17, the halogens, it'll have larger dispersion forces than something like, say, fluorine or chlorine, just due to the size and how easy it is to polarize to induce those dipoles in those larger atoms. This is Dr. B discussing the intermolecular forces of I2. Thanks for watching.